Hi everybody, I'm Richard Fink, and we're at Weather in the Frame today. I have a very special guest, actor Sean Dillingham. Thank you. To the studio audience, <laughs> we'll dub in applause. A uh, little bit of connection here. Sean was actually mm -hmm. in Krampus Unleashed, which was a movie we highlighted on the show. Mm -hmm. Sean, can you tell us a little bit about your role in Krampus Unleashed? No, but thank you for asking. <laughs> if I was, um, uh, I, I led the sort of the archaeology, I mean, I led the diggers. <laughs> That's a big word for me. That, how rude is that, too? Ar I can't say archaeologist that I'm in a library. <laughs> um, I led the group of uh, diggers uh, that were looking for a, a summoning stone yeah. that would bring uh, Krampus back to life and uh, got to play sort of an Indiana Jones kind of character and uh, worked with a, a group of great actors and <clears throat> it was a great film. Great film. A lot of fun, I can imagine. Yeah. Especially everyone dreams of playing Indiana Jones type Well, thing. listen, I pulled my dusty Indiana Jones hat with the, took the Disney pin off of it, <laughs> headed out. <laughs> and Robert Conway's a great, great director to work with. Great, great cast. It was really, really fun. Oh, Robert, a great time. Robert's a great friend of the show. We had a lot of laughs, especially at like two in the morning when everybody started to get tired and really punchy. Because <laughs> I, I did, I remember one take, I did my lines, I was so tired and I walked up and I was supposed to say, find any Anything yet, Bill? And I walked up and I went, find anything, Bill? And they just were like, I heard Robert go, cut! <laughs> so that was fun, but it was a great, great movie. Great I, movie. I can, I can imagine that night shoots are a little bit more difficult though. Oh, you get two, two in the morning, you get a little punchy. You know what I was happy about too is that he, uh, the first Krampus was CGI. Yeah. But this one, they used a, like a guy, a seven foot guy with a big hairy costume and that was great. And it's great for the actor to be able to have something like that to work off of instead of, okay, the creature's gonna be here and his eyes are gonna be up there. So it was cool, it was fun. Kind of a throwback, you know, to yeah. the old like American werewolf in London where you got, they actually made the character. I like that, I like that they do that. So as an actor, you prefer working with a physical, as like a physical like, monster prop or like something like that as opposed to a CGI prop? Well, yeah, I mean, as an actor, it's easier. I've done things on green screen, like, you know, before the, I did a, a commercial for a casino where I was supposed to be a pirate. And I was like, where's my pirate ship? And they're like, oh, it's right here. And it was about a foot long. And they were like, well, we're just gonna shrink you down and put you onto that. And, you know, you use your imagination and that's where your acting comes in. But it's always fun to, you know, work across. Listen, if they're gonna do another Jurassic World or King Kong, I can work with CGI. <laughs> I can work with it, but it's fun to to see the creature, you know. Yeah, I say we'll get you. We'll get you in Jurassic Park Five or Jurassic World Absolutely. Two or whatever they're going to call it. Yeah, uh, I want to say because Sean, you uh, you're a local actor. You're from. Are you? Were you born in Phoenix? Or no, no, I was actually born in Europe. I was born in Germany. Oh wow! Right. What brought you? What brought you out here? My father was in the army. Oh, okay. So we just happened to be there. We like I was even a thought at that point. <laughs> we just happened to be on tour, <laughs> West Berlin, and uh, no, the, he was stationed over there. And, you know, that's where I was. Uh, kind of cool to say that. Though. Where were you yeah. born? I was born in Europe. That's kind of cool. It's a good pickup. A good pickup line. And what made you? When did you decide you wanted to be an actor? Like, what was the moment that? Eight it, years old. Eight I years was old. Eight years old. Yeah, and I saw my first Gene Kelly movie, and I was like. That's what I want to do. Are you kidding me? What was the Gene Kelly movie? <clears throat> Singing in the Rain. That's a good movie. Where he was also an actor. <laughs> and it was fun and it was lighthearted. And I mean, it was just great. I just loved the magic. And back then, you know, the old MGM musicals with the giant sets, color. I mean, when I saw him dance with Tom and Jerry the Mouse, uh, uh, Jerry, I was just like, forget it. I, that's what I'm going to do. So got into like school plays and then community theater. And I discovered that I really liked performing, but I really hated rehearsing. Because <laughs> they were like, you know, six weeks of rehearsal, four weeks of performances, and I was like, you're kidding. I mean, that just killed it for me. Because like I said, I loved being on stage and in front of people, but the, the rehearsal just absolutely killed it for me. And so um, a, a few people were like, well, why don't you look into an improv group? And I was like, What's, what is that? And they're like, you know, like Saturday Night Live type of stuff. So I was like, okay, all right. I'll. And there was a group in town at the time called Group Therapy. It's a real group. I'm not just saying I went to Group <laughs> Therapy. And uh, got into improv and started learning improv there when I was about 20. <clears throat> and uh, that was fantastic. And all those people were also, well, not all of them, but the majority of them were also aspiring stand-up comics. 
And after that, I just was like, you know, trying to get into the different comedy clubs in Phoenix. Progressed where I got to the point where um, I continued, uh, I, I landed an agent, I was acting, doing commercials, films, uh, still developing my comedy, touring, doing all kinds of things. And then uh, just stopped for a while as I opened up the comedy club, my own comedy club, got into producing it. And then after a while, you know, people were like, I had an hour long act that I could do as a stand up. I mean, I, I headlined clubs in California and did a DVD. And but I found myself. People were like, "Why don't you go up, go up and perform at my club?" And I was like, "Yeah." And you know, I basically I was just like, I wrote these jokes, and I don't even want to hear them anymore. <laughs> I just got tired of it. The stand-up is really the the writer's game. You know, you have to be a prolific writer, and I was always a performer. So I kind of walked away from stand-up at all, and I said, "Well, you know what? I'm going to go up, and I'm just going to improvise with the audience, which is what I do now. Just I just." talk and go with the audience, make comments. I hate to say like Don Rickles, but kind of just freewheeling in the moment. And I said, I'm just gonna go up and do that. And if all I can ever do is three minutes, then hell with it. I'll be, at least I'll have fun. And that's what I do now. And I can do quite a bit of time doing that. And uh, actually there was a catalyst, to be honest with you, now that I recall it, there was a catalyst. Uh, I had not one, but two good friends die that were actors, tragically. One, uh, I won't get into the details, but they were both very unexpected, very tragic. And uh, there's, their names were Bill and another one named Brad. And uh, that really shook me because we were close. That shook me to my core. And these guys loved, they loved acting. You know, and these guys, if they got a call to be an, an unpaid extra in Los Angeles and you're only going to be on, on screen for 30 seconds, they would go. And I was like, man, the dedication, the, the drive, you know, and it, it sort of started to light that fire in me. And when they died, I was like, you know what? It's time to, excuse my French, but piss or get off the pot. I, I got it really, I'm getting older and I need to either do this or walk away. So decided three years ago, I am going to throw myself back into acting, not 100%, but 150%. And, that, and nobody's gonna push me greater than I will push myself. I am my own best salesman. And that's, that's just what I decided to do. I, you know, you, you want me to keep telling this story? Yes, please. Okay, so years ago, the camera guy's going, oh my God, <laughs> wrap it up! <laughs> So years ago, uh, about three years ago, I decided, and the way I used to do auditions is I would get a call for an audition for my, because I have an agent in town. And she would call and say, you have an audition next week, it's on Thursday. And I would go, cool! And I'd be all excited and I would wait for that audition. And I would get a call for an audition here in Phoenix, maybe every two, three months. I mean, that's pretty good, every two months in Phoenix, if you're getting an audition. So um, I was like, cool, okay. And then I'd go to the audition and then I'd wait a couple days to hear if I got a call back. And they're like, you got a call back, it's next week. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to the call back, cool. Well now by this time, you know, almost three weeks have gone by. And then if I was lucky enough to get it, they're like, okay, you got it. It shoots in two weeks on this day, cool. Now, by the time it shoots, a month and a half has gone by. So I've waited for the audition. I've waited for the callback. I've done the job. Once the job is done, I'd be like, okay, all right. Now I hope my agent calls again with another job. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. And I would just sit around and wait. And I, I basically gave the power of me and what I wanted to do to somebody else. Thank you for tuning in to the Tony Robbins show. <laughs> um, so I decided this time I was not doing that. You know, and it's changed. It's acting has really evolved because before the agents were vital and they still are, but they were just, they were the middleman between casting, directing, producing, and actors. Nowadays, you know, and you'd have to, if you wanted to get submitted for something, you'd send, take your VHS tape, put it in a manila envelope with your headshot and mail it off. Nowadays, there's casting websites, there's casting Facebook groups, there's, you can get connected to everybody now on the web and social media and uh, you know uh, you can sit there in a day and use your your uh, computer and submit for 30 40 50 jobs a day 
Whereas the, the agent used to do that, and if an agent got that many, they were lucky. They were a big agent. But now, with self, self-taping, self-submitting, I said, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it 150%, and I submit every day for 30, 40, 50 jobs. And if I land one, I'm like, cool, and I start submitting for the other ones. Whereas my family now goes, well, yeah, don't, don't you have one coming up? Yeah, but I just landed another one. Now I'm to the point where I'm lucky enough I'm doing four and five jobs a month from TV, commercials, films, whatnot. And that's the thing, just being on set, just being in front of a camera, acting, performing, doing something. So. I mean, I think that was, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you went into that detail and that's yeah. that's important to know because you didn't have everything figured out, right? What, what, you know, it took you a little while to figure out what you wanted to do and yeah. you course corrected a few times and I think that's important for a lot of people to hear because yeah. there are some people who want to immediately just start acting right out the gate or want to start writing or directing and they, I think. Even, even more so, they have the dream. But they sit around and they go, oh, I'd love to be an actor. Oh, I'd love to be. They don't even say actor. They go, I'd love to be a movie star. I'd love to be a movie star. Well, being an actor and being a movie star, two different things. You know, a movie star gets to show up to the red carpet, get out of the limousine. Hello, fabulous people. I've already made my hundreds of millions. <laughs> if you're an actor, you act. You act from a, a local video production, to a national TV show, to a short film, to a student film, to a movie, you act, you act, you act, and that's the thing. And you got to do it yourself, because gone are the days of sitting at a drugstore counter and somebody comes by and goes, where have you been? They don't do that anymore. And even nowadays, honestly, it's easier. Because with, with the, the coming on of, of YouTube and online channels and, and the camera technology, my God, it's just tenfold. Uh, a, a, a Adobe After Effects and Photoshop and iMovie and all these different movie programs. You can, I think people make spectacular productions. You know, and they're like, I've got a camera this big and I've got a, a home computer and they put out stuff that I'm like, my God. It's like the, uh, are you familiar with the story of the, the movie Paranormal Activity? Yes, I am. Yeah, they, they put that out. They made that movie. They took it to the studio, and they wanted Spielberg to direct it. They yeah. said, redo this movie, and we're going to have you direct it. And he screened it, and he went back to the studio and said, you know what? I Don't change it. Yeah, it's... Don't change it. Put it out the way it is, because it works. Why mess with it? And that's what you can do. You can do it nowadays easier than 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. And you have to decide, do you want to be an actor or a movie star? Because if you want to be a movie star, just go to the movie theater and watch movies and <laughs> keep fantasizing. So. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people need to hear that. I think, yeah. And I think I want to talk to you about the TV because you said, you know, working on a bunch of TV shows. Mm -hmm. You were recently on Longmire. Right. And you have an episode, your episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine is coming up. Is yeah. it this this coming, it's coming Tuesday, December 6th. What are some, I'd like to ask you, like, what are some, what are like three basic tips you could give to anyone who wants to be an actor? Well, um, I don't know if I have three, but... Uh, or just any, any tips or any like, well, advice you would give somebody. Well, first of all, you, you have to be your own best salesman. Nobody's going to push you more than you're going to push yourself. And that's what I said before. It's up to you. You have to go for it. You have to hustle. Create email lists. Get in touch with casting directors. Join those Facebook groups. Get on those casting pages and acting websites. Start networking with other actors and filmmakers and all those people that share the same dream. And they will they can actually help you. You can work on projects. And you have to make up your mind that you're going to be an actor. Not a movie star, but an actor. Because an actor acts in anything. Stage, TV, commercial, film, it doesn't matter. He just has to act and create. Um, another piece of advice. Let me think on that one. Well, I'll ask you, here's one, that, here's one thing I like to ask. Every actor has like the dream role or the dream movie or the dream project they want to be on. What's like a type of movie or a type of television show or just type of project you've always wanted to be on? Mm, I think two. I really like westerns. Big John Wayne fan, you know, Montgomery Cliff, Clint Eastwood, all those guys. So I would love to do a Western, and a good Western. Yeah. You know, not A Million Ways to Die in the West or anything like that. Or Blazing Saddles or, would have been cool. Yeah, don't, don't make Lone Ranger. Ugh, <laughs> no. Uh, Magnificent Seven with Denzel Washington was great. 
you know, just a really good epic western. It'd yeah. be cool to be in a western. And then it, we were talking before we started filming, but a, some kind of a big monster movie, yeah. a King Kong, a Godzilla, a Jurassic Park, anything like that would just be. Amazing. You, you like know? big monsters more than like the werewolves or vampires and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, you're more of a... Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Just that we got to get out of here. You know, <laughs> that kind of... Uh, I just like the big... I've always liked him since I was a kid. I remember on Saturday mornings watching Godzilla vs. Monster X. <laughs> Ghidorah. All those different monster movies, so... And what about... What oh, about? acting advice. Let me, let me, let me interrupt you because I oh, did remember good. something. Oh, you're good. Um... Always training, always training. You know, for some reason, stand-up comedians think that they have this sort of mindset of like, hey man, hey, I'm not taking any classes, okay? This is about my humor, but take a class. You know, I tell, we teach at my comedy club stand-up comedy classes. We have stand-up comedy classes. They can't teach you to be funny, but they can teach you the mechanics, how to use a mic, uh, what the light is, you know, what's a setup, what's a punchline, what's a twist or a left turn, things like that, that can help your get your humor out when you write. And stand-up comedians, for some reason, shy away. Oh, I'm not taking any classes. Actors, completely opposite mindset. Because of the, and this is advice for an actor. They say, if you're not acting, you should be learning. You should be training. Always, always be learning. Get into an acting class. Get, in, get into a stage acting class, an improv class, which I teach, by the way. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, drop-in improv class. Shameless plug. <laughs> um, get into a, a film class. Get Just get, go out. And I took stage combat at ASU. I'm learning fencing, <laughs> you know, uh, wrestling, uh, motorcycle riding, shooting, any, you know, gun shooting. Bull, I know how to work a bull whip and I know how to gun spin because you never know. And my, my wife, one day I was out front working on the bull whip. She's like, when are you ever going to need that? <laughs> and the next week I submitted for an audition for a Britney Spears video where they said, we're looking for a bull whip practitioner, must be proficient. And I went, hell with it, I'm going to send it in. That boy, that was nice to win that argument. <laughs> but I tell you, you never, so you never know. You never know when somebody's going to go, we need somebody that can gun spin. I can do that. I can do that. You know, I have in my closet specific wardrobe. I have a bunch of different hats and props. And you always need to be training as an actor and learning and, you know. So that's my other piece of advice. It's kind of, no, it's kind of like going to the gym. It's like, you know, you can't like, you know, yeah. you can't just slack off. You got to keep, you gotta no. keep your stuff working. Got to stay sharp. Always developing, always developing, because you, you're going to be like water. You're just going to get stagnant, and you're going to sit there, and nothing's going to happen. You've got to keep training and learning new skills, because maybe somebody's going to go, we're looking for somebody to play a cop. And you're going to go, I can play a cop. And they're going to go, you must know how to write, what are those stand-up little things? Segways. you, you got to know how to write a segue. And you go, oh. Well, they have Segway tours right now in Old Town Scottsdale. You can go learn how to drive a Segway. So you got to learn those skills. That's what I'm saying. That's another piece of advice for actors. <laughs> All right, I just have a few final questions because I think we're going to have to wrap up soon. The <laughs> director's going like this. Oh, my God. Oh, it doesn't matter what they want. This is, <laughs> Come on. Again, we're on, we're on camera. This is about us. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you just about, like, um, you have, a, you have an upcoming project. Uh, you told me you were flying out tomorrow. No, no, yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, I'm driving, actually. Oh, you're driving? I'm driving up to Denver. I'm shooting a film called The Rift. The Rift. Really cool movie. Oh, so good. I read the script and I was like, man, this is so going to get done on a bigger level by somebody else because uh, it's a movie where this guy, uh, I'll just give you the gist of the, can't tell you how it ends, obviously, but. Um, guy's daughter dies tragic. I'm the lead. My daughter dies tragically. Can't get over it. So they actually have a program called The Rift. That um, it's a computer program. You put in her pictures, voice, anything you have of her, and then you put on virtual reality goggles. You can go into the program and you can interact with her right there. That's cool. And it's you know he becomes obsessed with it, and the wife gets concerned and ah. Oh, so good. So good. The only thing I'm not looking forward to is Denver. I hate the altitude. <laughs> Last time we went to Denver, I got about 100 miles out, and I was like, I don't, I, I don't think I can live here. 
<laughs> also, obviously, not a fan of the cold. Uh, no, he gets 70, and I go, come on! <laughs> yeah, so, no, I'm a warm guy. Yeah. I'd say we'll definitely keep, we'll definitely keep uh, news on the Rift. Yeah. We'll definitely post it on the website. Yeah, I've got actually the Rift, and I've got... Uh, about four or five different movie projects lined up for next year. Wow. Finding Jordan, Jessica Frost, Strange Places, The Rift. I'm working on a web series that's going to shoot called Driving Miss Crazy. And, uh, yeah, it's looking good already. You really are a busy man, aren't you? Right? i got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought he was going to book it for a second. I was like, dang, we ran out of time. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, uh, now, now is shameful plug time. So, Sean, where can they follow you? Where can they find you? We want to play any I'll be on classes? the corner of Power and McCallops. <laughs> um, if you need me, there's a Valero right there. I have uh, a comedy club in Old Town Scottsdale called The Comedy Spot. And we're generally open Thursday through Sunday, but actually next year, I'm changing the schedule around, we'll be open Tuesday through Sunday. Stand-up classes, drop-in improv classes, $10 a person. Are you kidding me? That's the best, most affordable acting classes you will get in this city. Shows will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, open mic specialty shows on Sundays. Um, so if you want to try stand-up, come down. And then once a month, we have the Phoenix Screenwriters Association, and uh, that will be on going from Tuesday to Monday night. So one week a month will open be will, will be open Monday through Sunday, and uh, that will be. And the Phoenix Screenwriters, they, it's a group of local screenwriters, movies. And you come down and you get your script read in front of an audience. And then we also have 30, 40 actors that get to come down and do. They practice cold reading and. And uh, so that's another great free event. Hello, free opportunity for actors come down and you know learn how to, to do cold reads on stage. That's always amazing to me. You know, Kevin, you've been there. That that uh, screenwriter when people get up on stage and they're like, "You're going to read this screen right, this screenplay," and they're like, "Okay," and then people get it and it's like they forget they're supposed to be acting and they go. So the other day, I said to her, and I'm like, this, it's like we've gone around the classroom, and we're like, okay, when I point to you, you start reading. I did it one time, I read one time, and I was just like, I read some sergeant, all right, everybody, listen up now! And the whole room was like, what the hell is this guy on? But I'm like, aren't we supposed to be acting while yeah. we're doing this? And I pull him back a little bit. <laughs> but as an actor, you can come down. It's a free event. You can network. Hello. That's what I said. Network with people. There's screenwriters, producers, directors. There, there's 30, 40 actors down there once a month. It's free. Get down there. Come on. <laughs> and follow within the frame. That's another thing. you got to follow programs like this. Like this. Subscribe to this. And follow this. So you can stay in the know. See, he got the plug. Of, he, he plugged us before I had to. <laughs> any any social media they can find you at? No, no social media for you. Nah, I just I, you know I I mostly add actors, producers, directors. I'm on mm -hmm. the 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 space face. Is that what that's called? I think it's called that. I think yeah, that's the new one. I'm on the space face and on the Insta twit. <laughs> all those. No, I don't have Instagram or anything. I have a Twitter and a Facebook page, but. Uh, well, still, ch check out those acting classes, guys, because he, he obviously knows what he's talking about. Improv right? class on Wednesday, screenwriters, follow this program, get in the know. If you're going to do it, you have to do it. Yes, guys, and uh, keep, an eye out for keep an eye out for Sean. Watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine next Tuesday on Fox, and keep an eye, and we'll keep you, po keep you updated on The Rift. Sean, thank you again for thank coming you. on the show. Appreciate My name it. is Richard Fink. You guys know where to find me on Twitter and Instagram at rlfink94. And thank you for watching and staying within the frame. Have a good day.